one and a half million years ago, much of the Earth's land was covered by short grass steps. It was the Pleistocene age. Throughout this tumultuous time, the Earth was being pummeled by repeated ice ages. With each ice age, forests retreated and grasslands spread. Huge herds of prey were laid bare for a host of hunters. The cat-like saber-toothed megantarian with its enormous fangs, lay in ambush. Spotted hyenas and Ice Age giant hyenas tested the herds for signs of weakness. Top of the food chain was the dagger-toothed Homotherium, pack-hunting killers that were rampant across the world, from Africa to the Americas. They were on the lookout for something big, really big, like a young step mammoth. This was the age of the saber tooths. These were the world's top land predators. But things were changing. New forces threatened the old order with skills the planet had never seen before. The big cats. From this point in time, they rose to power, ending millions of years of world domination by terrifying, now extinct predators. Every species of these saber tooths vanished. And almost all the big cats survived. <laughs> Why them? What's their story? In this episode, we go back to when the big cats were just beginning their ascent to discover how the cheetah became so fast why the elusive snow leopard takes such incredible risks, and how the jaguar traveled to the ends of the earth. Big cats were on the rise. Among the earliest to appear were cheetahs. They lacked the enormous fangs of the saber tooths and didn't have the bone crushing jaws of the hyenas. But like most cats, had something the others didn't. Much more of a special kind of extra powerful muscle known as very fast twitch muscle. When this is combined with the cheetah's lightweight frame, it can deliver record-breaking speed. It could outrun all the other predators. And more importantly, it's prey. As far as we can tell, cheetahs are the fastest land mammals that have ever been. But their gift came at a price. They have no stamina. Here in Asia, during the Ice Age, these grasslands stretch for thousands of miles in every direction. Prey animals roamed in their millions over the steppes following the best grazing. 
This was the habitat the cheetah evolved to exploit. Today, the cheetahs of Asia are practically extinct. Luckily in Africa, about 7,000 of these elegant wanderers still survive. By observing modern cheetahs, we can learn more about how they found their place in the ancient world and why their existence is so fragile. Cheetahs need open plains, and just as in the Ice Age, here there are still elephants that keep the plains free of trees removing saplings as they emerge from the grass. The steppes of the Serengeti are among the few places left on Earth where there are wide open spaces packed with potential prey. And today, as in the past, there's no shortage of predators that could easily overpower a cheetah. and vultures still crowd the numerous kills of the numerous predators. Most of the grazers stay as far from cover as they possibly can, so they can see if trouble is coming their way. Any sign of a lurking killer, the herds generally run or display their extreme fitness. So the cheetah has a problem, which it solves in a unique way. Near the equator, the midday sun roasts the ground. With no shade, it's 40 degrees. Most hunters are much less active at this time of day. The fragile cheetah uses this moment of quiet to its advantage. Its super sharp daylight vision enables it to see far off tiny details. Like a small group of gazelles grazing a kilometer away. From this distance, the gazelle's stamina would easily beat a cheetah. So this young male will need every ounce of patience to get near enough for a strike. He uses the heat haze as camouflage. Zell's low position, only the upper part of the cheetah is visible. It can often take an hour for a cheetah to get within range, ideally less than a hundred meters. Super strength muscle kicks in. In a few seconds, he accelerates to almost a hundred kilometers an hour. The cat has covered 50 meters before the gazelle hears its paws hitting the ground. By the time the gazelle has reached its own full speed, the gap is down to five meters.
In slow motion, it looks effortless. But the cheetah is now using much of his strength just to push through the air. He pulls his legs tight below his body to reduce drag. Now, he is practically flying, getting lift from every bound. But he needs to be careful. There is a time limit on his run. The gazelle's tiny hooves dig into the ground to make extremely sharp turns. The cheetah's extended claws grab hold of the earth to match the gazelle turn for turn. He is burning energy at a prodigious rate and only has seconds left before his reserves are exhausted. Very fast twitch muscle delivers extra power, but only for a short time. This is the kind of knife edge that drives evolution. The gazelle has increased his chances of passing on his genes, while the cheetah will have to search for a meal that is not quite so fast. This mother and her almost full-grown cub have found themselves in an area with no gazelles. And the only prey on offer, a wildebeest. Compared to a gazelle, wildebeest are quite slow and less agile. This ought to be easy. trip her victim, to use its own momentum to bring it down. Luckily, her cub is here to help. The saber-tooths had weight and powerful forelimbs to stop their prey. The lightweight cheetah has neither. They are working at the very limit of their abilities. Only acting together do they have any chance of pulling the wildebeest to the ground. While the cheetah's body weight is reduced for speed, their typical cat-like short faces give them a powerful bite. Strong enough to silence the victim and to cut through skin quickly which is just as well. Vultures are already circling. They can spot the telltale dust trail from 3,000 meters up. The cheetahs will have to eat as fast as they can because dropping vultures are a sign that hyenas use to find free food as they were back in the Pleistocene. As the first hyena arrives, the cheetahs move on, having put away as much as they can. Of all the cats, the cheetah is the only one that is a true nomad. As long as they stay on the move, they can survive among much more powerful predators. 
In the Pleistocene, these amazing cats could walk unhindered across continents. And they did, from the southern tip of Africa to the Russian Far East. But today, they have lost almost all of their range, and in many areas, their continued existence is in doubt. As cheetahs disappeared from Asia, their fate in Africa is following the same trajectory. Extensive steppe grasslands like the Serengeti are becoming increasingly rare. In the past, all over the world, the spread of grasslands had favored the running hunters, like Homotherium, hyenas, and now the cheetahs. They were so successful, they evolved into two kinds. The standard cheetah and the 90 kilo giant cheetah, big enough to go after horses. This was a dangerous place to be, unless you were fully fit. As a result, some of the prey animals moved off the plains onto rocky country, where the runners couldn't catch them. For a period, the mountain grazers had the cliffs all to themselves, and evolved into many new forms. These were to be the bait that lured a new predator into the mountains. One that bore a remarkable similarity to a big cat that still survives here today. The ice ages may be over, but the rocky peaks throughout Central Asia are some of the harshest places on Earth. Even today, winter temperatures can drop to as low as minus 40. This is the world the snow leopard inherited. To survive in these desolate places, snow leopards must have evolved some special abilities. We have no evidence that the saber-tooths ever adapted to live in mountains. The snow leopard must have been a real pioneer. Firstly, it had to invent its own super warm fleece. A coat so thick, it could even cushion the cat against accidents. It carries a huge tail weighted with fat and massive furry paws. Adaptations to match its quarry for agility and grip. This cat is practically the opposite of a cheetah. retiring and extremely tough. Yet like the cheetah, snow leopards share the same kind of high power, very fast twitch muscle and the same short, powerful bite. Like the cheetah, its biggest problem is getting close to prey. Here, there are plenty of places for animals to hide. And they are acutely aware of the risk of attack. 
From their high vantage points, Ibex watch every move of every living thing. A mother with her cub is clearly visible on a distant ridge. And the cub doesn't help by playing hide-and-seek with itself. So if a snow leopard wants to sneak up on anything, it has to take hidden routes, which sometimes lead to a dead end. Incredibly, this snow leopard isn't injured. Perhaps the ability to bounce is a critical skill for a cliff hunter. One mistake from a stalking cat and the ibex just moved to the next valley. For the snow leopards, Night is the best time to follow them, so the prey can't see where they go. The ibex settle down quietly, eyes and ears open. They can't see the cat moving. As the stars rise over the mountains, their dim light challenges even the snow leopard's superb cat vision. And yet he moves with ease on a near vertical cliff face. It's hard to believe, but they are both still alive. In slow motion replay, it's possible to get a better idea of what happened. Incredibly, she doesn't let go of the Ibex. 
while the pair tumble, the cat still has the agility and strength to release her grip and grab the throat of the ibex to kill it. Now she rolls the ibex to prevent it gaining a foothold. She's in control again. Was she even injured? Here is the same cat three days later, apparently unhurt, making her way back to her now frozen meal, which does suggest snow leopards are better adapted to mountain life than we ever could imagine. Snow leopards today inhabit most of the mountain ranges of Central Asia. Estimates of their total population vary from between over 10,000 and just 2,500. Snow leopards are so elusive and thinly spread, we are only just learning how to study them in the wild. But one thing is clear, they're already low numbers are shrinking. While snow leopards themselves didn't spread far and wide like the cheetah, a few of their ancestors managed to escape their mountain refuges and found themselves in a completely different world. Life among trees and forests demanded a new set of skills. Because the Ice Age world in which they lived was constantly changing, new animals were constantly evolving. Wolves were making an appearance. Wild boar had just arrived here from the south. Elephants grew longer fur. This is the world that gave rise to a big cat that took a very different path. According to the fossil record, it seems to have been in the lost forests of Europe and Asia that this hunter first honed its skills. This new predator was a big cat, bigger than any that had lived here before. And yet it most closely resembles a species that would eventually only be found in the tropics on the other side of the planet. These ancient European predators were in fact jaguars. Supersized Ice Age jaguars. Twice as big as their snow leopard ancestors. And that meant they could hunt bigger prey. At 120 kilos, the Ice Age Jaguars equaled the fearsome Megantarian in weight. These animals had held sway in the forests and scrublands of Eurasia for millions of years. To kill large prey, Megantarian used its enormous fangs to stab through the soft tissue in the throat, severing the windpipe and avoiding biting into bone. A big risk with such long, fragile teeth. Jaguars didn't have the slashing fangs, but they did, and still do, have the most powerful bite of all the cats, with small, strong canines. 
which enabled them to hunt a wider range of prey. Sabertooths would soon be extinct in Eurasia, while the Jaguar would spread to new continents. Why did it survive while so many... giants. Huge scavengers soared over the hills. There were enormous snakes that could crush a big cat. And America's own saber-tooth, Smilodon. At twice the size of the Eurasian Megantarian, Smilodon would have towered over the jaguar. Even so, Jaguars and Smilodon coexisted here for half a million years. Why did the Jaguar make it into the present day and not Smilodon? By observing modern Jaguars, perhaps we can find the secret to their continued survival. While the giant birds that once patrolled these skies are missing, their smaller relatives indicate there are still plenty of predators here keeping the scavengers in food. For a big cat like the jaguar, this remote shoreline in Costa Rica would normally offer slim pickings. This beach is special. As darkness falls, baby turtles emerge from the sand and make their way to the ocean. For the first time, Special night vision cameras reveal an ancient sea. Night herons and raccoons emerge to gorge themselves. join the feast.
These aren't much of a meal for a giant predator, but at least there's plenty of them. The jaguar has no interest in any of these. It's waiting for something else. As the baby turtles make for the sea, another wave of adults are arriving to make new nests. In the darkness, the noise her flippers make as they slap on the hard sand is just the information the jaguar is waiting for. Human ears would not be able to discern the sound above the waves. But the Jaguar's super sensitive cat hearing picks it out clearly. Compared to the snow leopard, this must be the most casual big cat hunt ever. All the jaguar needs to do to restrain its prey is push the turtle's face into the sand, exposing the back of its neck to the jaguar's powerful bite. Flailing flippers are no defense. With the arteries in the prey's neck severed, the jaguar laps up the turtle's lifeblood. It's thirst sated, the cat will want to get its 40 kilo prize away from the beach. But this isn't to take it further from the reaches of the crocodile. Eight different jaguars have been seen on this beach in a single night, and these cats are not known for sharing. Strong, stubby canines easily pierce the turtle's armor. For saber tooths, with their giant teeth and weak jaw, turtle wasn't on the menu. The tough shell and bony skeleton of turtles could easily have damaged long, fragile canines. And so, the jaguar had found a new food source, avoiding competition with its giant enemies. And this could explain why jaguars and saber-tooths were able to live together for so long. On the beach, more turtles are coming ashore. This time, another jaguar is spoiled for choice. Again, the technique is the same. But as the jaguar starts for the forest with its prize, it appears to change its mind. In cats, the need to feed and the desire to kill are not necessarily linked. Despite the first turtle being enough of a meal, a second is killed too. The 
turtles' defense strategy is to synchronize their nesting. When the beach is inundated, even jaguars with the most insatiable drive to kill are unable to make a significant impact on the turtles. The bounty on this beach allows the jaguars here to thrive, and fossil evidence proves turtles have been part of their diet for hundreds of thousands of years. When the beach is empty, jaguars look back to the forest for their prey, as their ancestors did. In the dry season, many animals congregate at water holes. But deer are agile and fast, not ideal for a stocky jaguar. Instead, jaguars normally target the white-lipped peccary, an echo of the wild boar they certainly hunted in Europe. These tough animals live in large, wandering herds, several hundred strong, following the rains and fruiting trees. In the wake of each herd is often a jaguar, and the peccaries know it. So they've developed an excellent early warning system using their canines to make this strange sound. But as long as a jaguar stays in touch with a herd, there will always be a chance to catch one. And it is likely that in the Pleistocene, the big cats followed the wandering peccaries into South America. By half a million years ago, the jaguar had populated all but the coldest or driest regions. Especially rainforests, savannas, and swamps. And it is among these swamps that the jaguar found a world with a completely fresh menu. This is the Pantanal the largest wetland on Earth. There are still relics of the Pleistocene here. Cayman, smaller versions of crocodiles, crowd the banks. Giant otters still patrol the waterways. Capybaras, the world's largest rodent and the biggest cats in the Western Hemisphere. This is one of the very few places on Earth where it is even possible to see wild jaguars in action. The vultures that scavenge jaguar kills in Costa Rica are here in numbers too, keeping an eye on their meal ticket. So something must be going right for the jaguars, despite the fact that there are more caiman here than any kind of crocodile anywhere else on Earth. There are thought to be as many as 10 million in the Pantanal. On the surface, it doesn't seem to be typical cat country.
Normally, jaguars are very nocturnal. But here, they can be seen basking in the sunlight or patrolling their territory or hunting. Unlike the snow leopard, the jaguar has plenty of options. But this habitat doesn't suit a high-speed chase. With the approach of a big cat, everything makes for the water. Which is what you'd expect. It's broad daylight. Cayman, with their own set of powerful jaws and sharp teeth, are not the kind of animal that is normally preyed upon. As potential victims, they pose a few problems. Firstly, once in the water, the caiman will have far superior speed and would easily outswim a jaguar. Secondly, cats usually kill their prey with a suffocating bite to the throat. The caiman can hold their breath for half an hour, so that won't work. In the jaguar's favor, the cold-blooded reptiles need to bask in sunshine during the day. And this is the only chance the big cats have to catch one. However, Cayman can see a jaguar coming from a great distance. Unless the jaguar is cunning and stealthy. A successful hunt requires planning. The jaguar has to get very close without being seen. It goes into the forest and moves upstream out of sight. The jaguar emerges from the forest directly behind the caiman in its blind spot. The cat slips into the water. swims directly to the basking reptile, staying exactly where the caiman can't see it. Instead of the typical big cat throat bite, the jaguar uses crushing jaw power to bite straight into the brain casing. The kill is almost instantaneous. Perhaps this explains the jaguar's daylight-loving habits here, as caimans spend the night in the water, where the cats can't reach them. Once again, the jaguar's short face and powerful bite gave it the ability to hunt prey, the saber tooths had the wrong tools to kill. With its ability to swim, its eat anything attitude, an unparalleled jaw strength, the jaguar survived some of the most tumultuous times in history. But only just. In the past, they avoided human contact whenever possible. Today, in protected areas, they are beginning to come out of the shadows. To see a mum and cub playing in the open like this was until recently extremely rare. The Jaguar's conquest of the Americas made it one of the most wildly distributed cats of all time. But its reign was not to last. In Eurasia, the arrival of early human hunters, 
possibly lions and tigers too, put paid to the saber-tooths there. And by 400,000 years ago, the jaguar had suffered the same fate. From genetic studies, we now know the jaguar nearly disappeared in the Americas as well. It was quite possibly their ability to live in a swamp like this that enabled them to survive. <laughs>